Hi, uh, this is uh, section 1.2 for linear algebra. Uh, my oversight for not being able to upload this as soon as I, uh, I uh, videotaped it. Uh, there's been a bit of a technical issues as shown in 1.1. Um, you know, learn more about compression and sort of thing. But uh, yeah, I think I have. But I think I have this all figured out more or less so that I can speed things up. So, without uh, further ado, uh, let's split through the questions and then hopefully we would be you know, as ready as we can be for the upcoming test next Tuesday. Something like that. But uh, anyway, so let's look, go for number one uh, and two. So it's asking whether, you know, they give us a bunch of matrices and then they ask, they ask us if it's in row echelon form, reduced or row echelon form, both or neither. Uh, both is a bit silly to my perspective. Uh, in order to be in reduced row echelon form, you have to have row echelon form to begin with. We'll talk more about that why. Um, can't come up with a, a good analogy. But, so, um, some of the questions I already wrote down. But uh, before we start, we should really understand what echelon form and reduced echelon form is. So some of you, this is like a piece of cake, but some of you may, the definition may not be completely clear. Be clear. So, Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. So don't worry if you can't see over there. It just means reduced. So, um, yank. There we go. All right. So, uh, all right. So this looks a little fancy, but it really isn't. It's a simple rule. So let's look at the echelon form first, because you can't have reduced until you have echelon form, right? So what does echelon mean? It's, uh, I, I don't know, I have a bit, bit of a military fanatic, so um, uh, from a military terminology, echelon just simply means a very specified formation. So for example, I don't know if you guys watch Top Gun, but it's, it's a, yeah. But basically it's about air, uh, uh, air superiority fighters. And one of the tricks they actually used to do uh, is that, let's say there was a you know, jet flying like this, right? And the, the, you know, and the enemy warship would, you know, uh, use their radars or whatever uh, detec uh, detection uh, method that they have to bombard with signal signature waves, uh, hits the air airplane, and then or jet in this case, and then it bounces back, and that's how they know that whoa, something, uh, uh, some kind of aircraft is flying our way. So one of the interesting tricks they actually use is that they'll have this uh, jet, and then have another jet flying just below it. Or maybe even more jets. Uh, as it gets like as there's more and more jets, then it becomes harder to hide. But essentially, they because they're flying so close in a very similar formation, uh, the radar would often uh, make a mistake by saying, "Oh, there's only one jet," whereas there's maybe two or three jets, and, and so forth. Right? Obviously, uh, by the time it came out as a movie, they already realized this tax strategy, so they've uh, come up with countermeasure, which is actually really cool uh, and there's a lot of physics behind it but we won't get there um, I don't want to talk too much about you know interesting military arms race between Soviet Union and United, then the United States uh, fascinating stuff but you know for some other time but nonetheless that's what echelon form is right and uh, and uh, oh, I don't want to no should I talk about it Ugh. Fanalex is also a great example of echelon form uh, if you ever know, if anyone watched a movie 300, you would know what I mean, right? Uh, great strategy if you're fighting against cavalry or anything, anyone who's stupid enough to charge uh, in mass to the front, but uh, very, very vulnerable to side flankings or uh, or have specialized forces uh, to uh, penetrate through the spears and then slash uh, all the soldiers one by one using short swords. This is how the Romans tear. Uh, petrify the, uh, the Greeks, especially the Spartans, because they thought they were invincible and, uh, yeah. Anyways, but that, that's, I'm getting, I'm getting a little too historic here. But nonetheless, okay, so let's uh, get into it, all right? So echelon form, so three rules, not that hard, right? But, uh, and rules are pretty simple too. One, non-zero rows will, uh, go up, and rows with only zeros go down. That's all there is, right? Um, so, for instance, if you see here, uh, yeah, E. So all non-zero rows, which means, which is simply just saying any rows uh, that are not all made of zero. So this one is non-zero row because it's got one, two, and three. This one is non-zero, so it's got one and one. 
even this one, I know this is, oh, back from the uh, reviewing 1.1, 1 .1, uh, is this considered to be consistent or inconsistent? And if it's consistent, unique solutions or infinite solutions? Some people might point out that say, oh, 0 equals 0. That's a key signature for um, infinite solutions, which is true. However, as we've covered, there is also inconsistency, uh, 0 uh, equals 1, which is not possible. And inconsistency triumphs uh, infinite solution any day, right? So that's why if, you know, that's not what it's asking here, but if there was a question like that, we will call this inconsistent uh, matrix, right? Or not inconsistent matrix, so the matrix are always consistent. The solution will be inconsistent, yes. But uh, anywho, so that's the idea. All zeros are placed at the bottom, rest on the top, right? So that's all there is. That's all I'm talking about. Nothing too groundbreaking. Okay, so that's that. And the second uh, rule is each leading entry or leading coefficient of the row is organized so that, and I'll talk more about in detail. So before I jump into it, what the hell is a leading entry or leading coefficient? Hopefully you know because we are technically in 1.5 now and maybe 1.4 for other sections. Uh, but uh, but uh, leading entry simply means anytime when you have a matrix, what is the number farthest to the left? And that's all there is, right? So let's look at this one as an example. 1, 2, 0, 3, 0. What is a non-zero number that is farthest to the left? And it's 1. Right? So that's why for row 1, 1 is the leading coefficient. Leading, oh, and the second row, for example, where is the non-zero number farthest to the left side? So not this one, that's 0. Not this one, that's also 0. This one, however, is 1. So for the second row, this is the leading coefficient or leading entry. They're the same thing. we we'll choose whatever method you want to talk about. Uh, I think... Uh, Leading entry is a term that the uh, textbook uses. Uh, some professors like Carlos, he prefers the term uh, leading coefficient. Both of them works just fine. Um, so, anywho. Uh, now, look at this one. It's a little weird. 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Now, a lot of people might get a little bit confused because um, usually the one numbers at the very end, they usually just means equals to something, right? So it will be, let's say this was x, y, z, w, right? Then it's going to be x, uh, x is 0, y is 0, z is 0, and w is 0, so 0 equals to 1, right? So 1 is not really a coefficient, it's not a unknown variable. It very well may be. It's just that most of the examples we've been dealing so far sort of implies it, is, it looks like this. Right? So that all these four are unknown variables and equals to some kind of a number, right? That may not be the case, right? At all. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, this could be z, uh, y, x, w, and e. Actually, e is a bad example because if you do calculus, e is actually a number, not a unknown. Well, let's say it's an unknown variable. But nonetheless, I need to stop jumping ahead of myself. But because of that, so, so don't get confused. Just because it's the last number doesn't mean it doesn't count. This still is the leading coefficient because by definition, right, this is the farthest, it, this is the only non-zero that is closest to the far left. It's kind of a horrible example because there's no other numbers to compete with. But nonetheless, the definition still applies. So that's what I, so uh, the, that's the first, so that's what leading entry and leading coefficient is. And the, and the row is organized so that, and uh, I thought it would be better to explain rather than copying and pasting the long explanations from the textbook. Move. Okay. So, um, what they mean by this, if there's a leading coefficient here, for example, on E, right? The, the other rows, right? Other rows with different uh, leading coefficient locations. So, here, the coefficient is here, here, and here, right? So, they cannot overlap. So, if there's a coefficient uh, number one here, the next leading coefficient should be on the next side of the column. So it could be here, or it could be here, or it could be here, or it could be here, right? As long as to the right of this guy. Now, it could have been here, but it was here. That's fine. It's still to the right of this coefficient, right? So after this line, the next line better be either here or here. And in this case, it happens to be here, so it's fine. It doesn't matter whether you have to, uh, whether if there's a coefficient here. So next column, it has to be right next to each other. 
Not so. A lot of examples, they show that just because the numbers look nice, right? But that doesn't, necess that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. So that's all we're saying. And the last third, uh, and the last example, sorry, last rule that is, uh, number three, uh, you guys can sort of see it. Below a leading uh, entry is always zero. So what do I mean by that? So remember we were talking about all leading coefficients or leading entries? Any number below the uh, ent uh, co leading coefficients must be zero. So here, one, zero, zero, zero. Good. No other competition. Here, one, zero, zero. So no competition there. One, zero. No competition, right? So that's all it is. We only look at the bottom. We look at the top later when we are worrying about whether the matrix is reduced or not, right? So only the bottom, right? Now, uh, reduced echelon form, essentially the same thing. It's like echelon form upgrade 1 point, or 2.0 or whatever. Uh, like it's just, uh, reduced is just on top of this. So reduced uh, echelon form must be echelon form at first. So it has to be able to fulfill these three rules, right? On top of that, reduced form has two more rules that are very similar, so I actually put it this way, right? So the first rule is kind of similar to the second one, right? So remember we talked about how like leading coefficients and the row has to be in a specific manner like we talked about? In reduced form, the only additional requirement is leading entries are all ones. Now that's usually the case from our examples, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. Like for example, yeah. There is no good example here, but let's say there was. Uh, no, actually there, yeah, you know, whatever. I don't, I don't want to spoil these questions yet. So let's say I change this middle one to, uh, that was bad uh, oversight, but let's say this was uh, three, right? So is this still a leading coefficient? Yes, because it's a non-zero number farthest uh, to the left, right? Now, uh, this is still, um, so because of that, it's still echelon form. However, if we were talking about the reduced, if it's reduced or not, all, remember the rule. What, remember what the rule says. The leading entries all have to be one. This is a leading entry, but it's not one. So that's why it's not reduced. Now we can use elimination to reduce it, of course, and we'll talk more about that. But that's essentially the idea. So fixing this back before I get confused. And the last rule for the reduced. Above leading entry is also zero, right? So that's really simple. So remember in the echelon form, I said all numbers below the entry and uh, uh, leading entry must be zero. Well, it's a similar idea. For reduced, you can't just uh, have zeros at the bottom. It has to be also on the top. So uh, this one, right? We already checked zero, zero at the bottom. So it's, it's uh, echelon form. But we're now also going to check any numbers on top of one, which is zero. So it's okay. But if it wasn't zero, let's say it was three, we have a problem. For this one, the leading coefficient of one, zero, 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 right? We could try to look to check the top, but the problem is one is already on the top. Like there's nothing that can go higher, right? So because of that, we don't really have to bother to check, right? It's implied as zero, right? So that's the idea. So it really are simple, right? So let's just breeze through it. So let's look at E and G. I think we, I kind of made a pretty clear uh, impression that E is going to be uh, reduced to echelon form, or both in this case. Uh, again, a little silly to me. Because it meets all the requirements, right? So first rule was non-zeros on the top, no, uh, rows with non-zeros on the top, uh, rows with only zero at the bottom. Rows with only zero at the bottom, everything else non-zeros. Awesome. Second one, leading entry and leading coefficient, the row is organized so that, you know, uh, in each column there is one, uh, uh, one so in each column there is one leading coefficient. Um, so here, first row, the uh, leading co entry is on the first step, in the, fir uh, in the first column, right? So next, uh, next row, better have leading coefficient that's either on second column, third column, or fourth column, or fifth column, as long as it's right of this previous row, right? Nope, not there, but it's right here. So that's okay. Next one, it better be either on the fourth column or fifth column. Nah, yeah, so that's okay. Next one, it better be zero, right? Because if, if you look at here, so the rule says, 
if the last co uh, last if this row has a leading co coefficient a leading coefficient in the fifth column, then the next one has to be on the right. That's not possible unless we expand the matrix, right? So, but it's okay because this is our all zero rows, right? So, because of that, this is perfect um, for the echelon form. So, reduced form, uh, the only two other requirements is the leading entry has to be one, and all leading entries uh, have zeros on the top, right? Which also works, right? So, all leading coefficients are one. On top, no, nothing, so it's okay. Here, on top, zero. Great. Here, leading coefficient one, zero, zero. So good, right? So because of that, this is reduced. That's on the solution too. But G, let's look at this one. So is this uh, echelon form? It is. Because, well, the first row, remember non-zero rows top, uh, rows with only zeros go on, go on the bottom. We don't even care because there are no non, uh, there is no rows with just zeros. So um, either say you get you get the first row passed as a freebie or just ignore it. I don't care what you uh, what your mentality is. We don't have to worry about the first row. Second row, a leading entry, a leading coefficient of the row is organized. Okay, so let's see. Um, uh, first row, uh, co leading coefficient is this guy. And so next row, it better have a leading coefficient. Second or third or fourth, right? As long as it's to the right. And it is. It's on the right. Perfect. Good enough for me. Number three, uh, third row, below leading entries are all zeros. Below one, zero. Perfect. Below one, there is nothing. So it's good. There, is there other leading coefficients that we need to worry about? None, right? Because there's only two rows. There's the first row, lead coefficient, leading coefficient, this guy. Second leading coefficient, oh, sorry. Se <laughs> okay, and on second row, the leading coefficient is this guy. So, nothing more to talk about, right? So that echelon form is done. But however, it is reduced. The other uh, two, uh, two, redu uh, two rules for reduced, as we talked about, leading entries are all ones. That is definitely true. Yeah, we're almost there. But what the last rule says, above leading entry is also zero. So one above, there's nothing. So no worry about it, right? We're good. But look at this one. Above uh, well, one, it better be zero if it's reduced. Is it? No, it's negative seven. Tough luck. That we cannot fulfill that rule. Therefore, it cannot be reduced. So this one's just echelon form. I love the word echelon. But anywho, so but that's the idea, right? Oh no, this is a race that's hard to erase. Okay, but anyhow, so let's uh, look at the second question, right? Uh, the first question isn't so great because apart from G, they all have the same solution. So I thought I'd just do a little bit of two. Uh, let's see. Look at this one, 2B. Uh, so, um, yeah, so if you look at it here, uh, let's see if it's an echelon form, right? Uh, there's no non-zero, so don't really care about the first rule. Second rule, uh, let's make sure that uh, the, it's organized. So, so first coefficient here, beautiful. Second coefficient here, beautiful. Uh oh. The third row, the leading coefficient is two, which is fine, right? We're not talking about reduced debt, right? Uh, as long as it has a leading coefficient, that's fine. But what does our rule says? If there's, if the leading coefficient is on the second column here, the next row must be third or further if that's possible. Here it's not possible, right? So the leading coefficient better be here for the third row, right? But it isn't. They're on the same line, right? So it's because the leading coefficient for the third row is not to the right of the second row, because of that, this fails. So this is not an uh, echelon form. Now if it's not echelon form, we don't even have to worry about reduced echelon form because like I said, uh, reduced echelon form has Assume that you already uh, fulfills all the conditions to become an echelon form to begin with. So if it can't be echelon form, forget reduce uh, echelon form. It's gone, right? So that's so that's that's neither, right? There is uh, a thing special name for that too. But anyways, I won't get into that. I'm wasting a lot of time as it is. Okay, let's look at E, right? Um, so tell me what's the. I mean, we could go rule one by one, but what should be one thing that really gives you an eyesore? Yeah, that, you know, think like Maria, right? Uh, I should give you a bit of a 
perfectionist when it comes to details. But nonetheless, if you look at E, right, the middle one, a row with all zeros. Remember the very first rule? Row with only zeros has to go down. It has to be below rows with non-zeros, right? So this is non-zero. So this guy should be above this second row with all zeros. Because of that, they else echelon can't be echelon form. And therefore, we don't care if it's reduced. Can't reduce if it's not even an echelon form to begin with. F. I, I know I repeat myself, but you know, I, I find that pattern recognition is a, like one of the best ways to learn things in, in basic math anyway. Once you start studying like calculus too, or God forbid if you decide to take linear algebra too, and you know, you gotta play a little smarter. But for now, we're okay. So let's look at F. We can all see F, good. So this one, um, let's see here. So, uh, all non-zeros at the bottom, like it. Ah, and consistency. I know I keep saying that, but you know. So, and this will be infinite, oh yeah, this will be infinite solutions because if we have zero, e oh no, zero equals zero, so it looks like infinite solution, but there's also inconsistency here, right? So this is inconsistent solution, uh, and so is this one, right? But nonetheless, I know I'm like constantly like going back in a random pace, but maybe it helps juggling your memory. So first row, one, two, three, four, four uh, and so forth. So uh, non-zeros all at the bottom. Good, good. I'm happy with that. Leading entries are all organized. No, it isn't, and that really sucks because the leading coefficient is here. So the next row, the leading coefficient has to be on the right of the first column, right? So it's got to be here, here, or here, here. Problem, the coefficient right here. It's not to the right. It's right in the same column. Because of that, it fails. So just because the numbers look, look a little bit well organized like this one, doesn't necessarily mean it meets the goal. So we really need to be 100% when it comes to the requirement, uh, the, uh, the echelon uh, form and non-echelon form requirement. I think those pretty much cover all the basics, so I'm just going to keep going, okay? So, uh, let's look at number three. Um, so, all these matrices are oh, three and four. Yeah, they're very similar questions. So, um, I would recommend that... Um, I would recommend that, eat, like, remember in 1.1 I said don't worry about doing all the questions. 1.2 is one of the sections where you really want to do as many questions as possible because some may be similar but you get to practice elimination so unless you're you know a prodigy already so you know this comes second handed to you I would recommend that you actually do all the questions as humanly as possible later on 1.3 1.4 you know that margin of return actually starts to go down so I actually don't encourage doing all even and odd questions 1.2 Definitely do all of them, I think. You know, I don't know, that's what I did, but you know. Um, anywho, but the three and four, they're pretty similar, so the here, we don't have to really worry about much, but again, you know, just to practice elimination. It's not, it's not something everyone's comfortable with just yet, right? So, uh, let's look at three. Uh, well, it's not, it's not that difficult, but you know, let's try a few, okay? So, three, um, A. And then I'll talk about D2 because they have a different way to solve things. So 3A. I might do some 4 too, but anyways. So it's um, 1, negative 3, uh, 4, 7, 2, 5, uh, 2, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. Okay, so we assume this is already reduced. You know, hopefully they're not, you know, uh, are fooling us, but not us. Okay, so we have this, and then basically we're going to translate it into a linear equation, because we're trying to solve it, right? So, oh, yes, but, oh yeah, um, yeah, so it's assumed it's reduced, so we could reduce further, but uh, for this question, they're just asking us to solve the system, so we don't have to try to do eliminations just yet. We'll do this uh, for the other questions, but anyway. So let's, I'm just going to name this x, y, z, and some number, right? So if that's the case, that's x minus 3 plus 4 equals 7. Uh, that's going to be uh, 0, so we don't actually... Uh, y, sorry, yeah. We're doing linear equations, right? 
So this one is uh, zero, so we don't write anything. Uh, one y or just y. Ugh, this is a really good pen. Uh, good marker. Okay. Anyways, y plus two z equals two, and zero zero, so none of them exist. So z equals five. So that's pretty easy to do. So uh, you know uh, the the part where we actually get to solve these is what we call uh, back. Uh, backstop, uh, backstop process, but um, uh, the, again, name isn't really important, it's what you do, right? So anyways, so z equals to 5, we already know that, great. y equals to 2z plus, uh, 2z equals to 2. So then, you know, everyone knows algebra, right? So, uh, assuming that I know this, the y is going to be same thing as 2 minus 2z, right? Because I'm moving the 2z this way, so subtract and subtract, right? So you have that. And then I just put 2 minus 2, and the z equals 2, 5, right? So then that becomes 2 minus 10, and that becomes negative 8. So, and that's the case. And then, you know, we do the same thing for the x, right? I think you guys can see here. So x equals 2, so I'm going to move all this to the right. It's like when you isolate for a variable, you look at your target and... It's like bullying, right? I know it's horrible analogy, I know. But like when you're trying to bully someone, you don't bully people in mass, right? I mean, unless you're very charismatic or, you know, this is very difficult to do. So the strategy is to make sure that the guy you want to bully is isolated. So all his friends, take them out one by one. The further from the X, the easier to, uh, to isolate. So you move the Z to this here and Y to here. Now X is by itself. Now it's the time to bully, right? So, you know, uh, so that's the strategy, that's the mentality you should have if you're not comfortable with algebra. So, x equals 2, um, 7 is already on the right, so let's write that. Uh, negative 3y, we move. So in order to move, move, uh, I add 3y, and then I add 3y on this side. So, because there's an equal sign, right? Whatever you do on the left side, you must do the same on the right side, right? Can you imagine violating this rule when, you, when you're with your sibling? Disastrous, right? So that cancels out. So it's seven plus three uh, uh, y, and I do the same thing with four z, except this is already plus. So the opposite now is not to add; it's to minus, and then you minus the same thing. So it looks messy, but if I write it more cleanly here, that's going to be three z. Uh, so three y minus four uh, z, and all we have to do is just substitute seven. Uh, plus 3, and what was my y? We already figured out the y, which is negative 8 from our early equation. Negative 8 minus 4z, which was 5. Uh, so if you actually do that calculation, it's 7. This is negative 24. And then that's going to be negative... Yeah, yeah, that's right, negative uh, z, so z was 5, 20, so that's going to be negative 37. So yeah, so this looks really messy, but, but um, so I would, so technically it has all the right answers, but if your professor sees this, they might not be particularly happy. So I'm running out of room, don't ever raise, uh, for your case, but this is totally what I would do, and I need to get a better mark uh, eraser. So I would just put like you know z equals to um, five, and uh, y equals to um, negative eight, and x equals to negative thirty-seven. Or uh, this is how Maria shows it, uh, which is a little bit more fitting. So yeah, I would put x, y, z equals 2, matrices, 5, negative 8, negative 37. Again, I don't think it really matters which one you choose. This may look confusing. Because this is x equals to 5, y equals negative 8, z, right? So, you know, whichever works for you. Oh god, this is horrible. I got it. I like my old border better even though it was so small. Okay, so that's the case. 
Uh, the rest are pretty much similar. It's uh, just a matter of algebra, so I won't really get into it. I might get into D, just so that you're comfortable with the ans answering format. So this is what happens when there is no solution. So this is, remember the inconsistency? That's what we're talking about, okay? So D is, ba -ba 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 -ba. Um, yeah. Okay, so, uh, okay, so that's a one, maybe a three, seven, one, one, zero, one, uh, four, zero, and here comes the incons inconsistent row. This, oh, no, not inconsistent row. I always, I always get in trouble when I say this. It's third row that has inconsistent solution. Right? There is no such thing as inconsistent row. Well, actually, they could. The row will be like just tilted or something. I don't know. Okay, but anyway, so because the, uh, so this one obviously is inconsistent, we can tell right away, right? So you so in one point one, we don't really have to talk much. Just to say zero equals to one, and that's inconsistent. Uh, that's what we did on the solution book. If you if you bother to look, they put it in a little bit more fancy way: zero times x plus zero times y plus zero times z equals one. So, it looks different for some, but you know, it really is the same thing, because zero times anything is zero. So that's zero plus zero plus zero, which is the same thing as uh, equals to one, and then so if you add all this up, it's just literally zero equals one. So I don't see why this isn't a, isn't a right format. Uh, you could write this, just so that uh, it looks more fancy and that uh, looks more relevant to the ma given matrices, but zero equals one, inconsistent. That doesn't hurt at all, right? I might write third row, row three, or line, I'm oh, sorry, yeah, line three. Doesn't matter which one you use. I think we'll use this format later on when we do elimination, but you know, that has this. So therefore, the whole matrix is in inconsistent. That, that might be a little safer approach, but nonetheless, really, really doesn't matter. Uh, it's set uh, algebra number four, but is this worth our time? Because I'm already talkative as it is. I think they're all pretty much the same question. Yeah, it really is. Okay. So, yeah. Um, post it on Facebook if you're not sure, but no, number four is pretty much the same thing as uh, three. So, um, either inconsistent or very obvious. So, I really want to get into elimination. So, let's go. Um, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So five and uh, seven you already have because it's odd. So I'll try number six and eight. You know, and uh, what I sh but what I should be doing should be pretty similar because the questions are obvious. Before we actually talk about though, we want to talk about the difference between Gaussian elimination and Gaussian uh, Gauss's Jordan. Elimination. Okay. So it looks uh, sometimes it's confusing. It's like um well I know how do you do elimination? I don't really know the difference in between those two. Normally it probably wouldn't matter because we want the solution matrix to be as reduced as possible so that the numbers become simple enough so that when we do what we were doing, right, using linear, uh, linear equations to figure out the solutions, we don't have to deal with all the weird numbers and we can do the calculation as simple as possible. Um, yeah, it, this, uh, it says linear algebra, but it's like, you know, it's not an algebraic contest, right, so to speak. But, um, um, that we should appreciate the difference because in some cases they ask us to use a very specific method. So Gaussian elimination, very simple. It just means Gaussian elimination. Remember the um, echelon form and re uh, reduced that the rules that you were talking about. This is fancy chart, right? I pushed too far. Yeah. Whoa. There we go. Yeah. So think of it this way. It's just like sine and cosine is uh, sort of related to y and x respectively. Uh, echelon form just means okay something to do with Gaussian. Uh, Gaussian. I love that word. My spell Gaussian scan. But uh, elimination, right? And reduce is just Jordan elimination, right? So yeah. So just associate yourself this way, and it will be so much easier to remember, right? After the Gaussian elimination, you should your matrix should have all the all these three requirements. Whereas for Gauss's uh, Jordan elimination, it has the, it also fulfills a reduced formation. That's all there is, and we'll see the difference, uh, the contrast, if you will, between six and eight because six should be uh, yeah. So yeah. Anyways, so let's uh, look at number six. 
So I have 2, 2, 2, 0, negative 2, 5, 2, 1, 8, 1, 4, negative 1. Okay? So, um, I don't know, I write this because I saw a solution. I guess you could just copy it down. Um, uh, but uh, I always, I just say, you know, just to be safe, I guess, uh, augmented, augmented matrix for the system. Just really, really wordy and fancy way of saying I got the linear equation uh, and uh, convert it into matrix. Just write something. I, I, I don't know. Uh, ask your professor, you know, just to be sure, but, you know, that's what I write. Because technically, we should be showing what we did for every step, right? Uh, speaking of which, I probably shouldn't have wrote that big. But anyway, so, next one, what we're going to do is, uh, so, let's think of strategy, okay? And sometimes people get confused with this. Whenever we have elimination, so remember our goal, whether we want echelon form or reduced form, right? Event, what was the requirement for an echelon form? All non-zeros should be at the bottom, and uh, all they, they should all have a co uh, co leading coefficient or leading entry, so that, let's say this guy is the farthest to the 1, right? Then the next one should be on the right or here, and so forth, right? And the third one was all leading coefficients must have zeros at the bottom, right? So that's what we're trying to do. So let's make sure, the easiest one I can see is, let's say, okay, this guy looks a little bit wholesome, right? It looks as close to one as possible, which is what we're ideally looking for. By the way, it does not have to be one if it's Gauss's elimination, because that, what is, who has that requirement? Leading entries all have to be one. That's the reduced. And you can't see it, but that's, this is a reduced section, right? So because of that, unless they are asking you for you to do Gaussian Jordan elimination, which is on the reduced, okay, you may not be able to see this. So I'm gonna roll up slightly. Ah, there we go. Whoa. Let's see. But anyways, yeah. So, now that you know. Gaussian elimination it has something to do with echelon form. Gaussian Jordan elimination has something to do with reduce, right? So, we're not really worried about converting all the leading entries as one. You can if you want to. It really doesn't matter, right? But, uh, yeah. So, because of that, um, it, since this is Gaussian elimination, I'm not even going to bother dividing into uh, 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 one. Uh, I, but, I, but I could, if I just want to make the math simple. The reason why I might want to do that is because, see, it's 2, 2, 2, 0, right? So then everything else becomes 1, 1, 1, 1. Simple number, right? But that's what I normally do, where, regardless of what the, uh, what the method is. But let's, because it's this Gaussian elimination, let's just be as pure as possible and just go all the way, right? So, how do I get rid of all these le uh, knowing leading coefficients? Well, negative 2 and 2 was the best way. Just add 2 to negative 2 and it will become 0. Perfect. What about 8? Um, well, 2 has to become 8 somehow and then becomes negative so that it cancels each other out, right? So if it's negative 2, how do I make that into 0? Plus 2. If it's 8, what do I need to do? Uh, make it negative 8, right? So I want to do, manipulate my first row so that I get these two options. So we'll talk more about it as we go along, right? So. 2, 2, 2, 0. That's going to stay the same, right? So what I'm going to write is, I'm going to define a new line. So line 2 and line 3. Oh, boy, it becomes so big, so I wish I had a camera, man. But anyways, so because of that, um, I'm going to have to define a new line 2. So what's going to be? Well, it's going to be line 2. Remember, how do I get rid of negative 2, right? So, I can't really touch line 2 because I'm using line 1 to manipulate things, right? Line 2 is gonna be like that. So, line 2 will become line 2. Get it. But that will be the same thing. So, I have to add this with line 1. Now, for... Oh, so not initial. Line 1. Now, would this work to get rid of the, this uh, unknowing leading entry? Yes, we can. Because if it's L1 plus L2, 2 plus negative 2 becomes... 0, which is the new uh, line 2. So because of that, we're going to actually do that. So line 1 plus line 2. 2 plus negative 2. 2 plus negative 2 is 0. Now, now that this works, we have to do the same thing on all the sides. 2 plus 5, 7. 2 plus 2, 4. 0 plus 1, 
1. We did the same thing to the redefine line 3. But here, can we just add? Because 2 plus 8, what's going to be? 10. Now that doesn't help. I want leading coefficient to be all gone. So that this is the only guy left standing, right? So how do I get rid of 8? It's got to be negative 8. How do I get negative 8? 2 times of negative 4. So I'm going to put negative 4, uh, no. Yeah, that's right. Negative 4, 1 L, a uh, line 1, plus line 3 equals the new line 3, right? So it's, they say the same thing, but this is a new one, right? So uh, we don't put new uh, connotations in or anything like that. So anyways, so because of that, this becomes 0. So remember, 2 times negative 4 got us 8, right? Negative 4 times the first line plus the third one, right? So because 2 times negative 4 is 8, so it cancels out, I have to follow the same pattern. So that's going to be 2 times negative 4 is negative 8, and negative 8 plus 1 is negative 7. 2, again, so same thing, negative 8 plus 4 is negative 4. 0 times negative 4 is going to be 0. Anything times 0 is 0, right? Uh, plus negative 1. So that's going to be it. So we should be happy, right? Well, sort of. Because remember, I, and we, are still haven't, we still haven't organized the leading entry yet, right? Here, beautiful is fine because everything below is 0. Next leading coefficient should be on the right on the next call. Of, next row should have a leading coefficient to the right of the column. Yes, it does. Beautiful, right? Uh, well, no, this doesn't work, but from between here and here, it works, right? Well, again, I have leading coefficient here, I have leading coefficient here as well. That ain't good. I, this, because the second row is leading coefficient here, anything below should be zero, right? The top, some people might be annoyed, but that's reduced, so let's not worry about that. This is Gaussian elimination. We don't care about reduced. If we care about reduced, we're doing Jordan, uh, Agassiz, uh, Agassiz, uh, Jordan, uh, elimination. I know I keep repeating myself, but hopefully that will reinforce your mind so that when you do things on your own, you've been effectively brainwashed. So, anyways, uh, I have, I have, so I, let's say I'm working with 7. How do I uh, get rid of 7? Very simple. 7 and negative 7. So I just you know, add them together and they'll cancel each other out. So the next one, I'm just going to copy the first one because we're not really planning to do anything with this. So, line 2, probably keep it the same way, because my annoyance is the third line, not the second line, right? So, again, how, so, uh, so it's going to be line 2 plus line 3 equals new line 3. Oh, you guys can barely see that. Okay. Ah, this, this is a curse of having two big slides. Ah, uh, okay. I'll try to write a little smaller. Um, but uh, anyways, 2220, 0, 0, um, So this is what I'm going to do it uh, to make the new line 3. Line 2 plus line 3 equals line 3, right? So 0 plus 0, 0, right? 7, uh, negative 7, that becomes 0. Beautiful. 4, holy crap, 4 and negative 4, 0. Good. 1 plus negative 1. Zero. Oh, interesting. Okay, so uh, that's the, what we have. We don't have to touch anything else. Now, does that meet all the requirements as an echelon form? Yes, it does. Non-zero somehow magically becomes right here, right? And all the non-zero rows are on the top. So all is right with the world. Number one is done. Leading entry. So here, leading entry, uh, and the next row should have a leading entry on the right. Great. The next row should have a leading entry on the right. Oh, we don't care because there's no leading entry here. So, beautiful. Done. Third one below leading entry is zero. Leading entry, zero, zero. Cool. Um, uh, uh, yeah, and the leading entry, second uh, leading, uh, sorry. Le yeah, I always get confused. Leading uh, entry for the second row is seven. Anything below that, zero. Great. Don't have to worry about anything else. Some people might uh, uh, ask, okay, well, why not this one, right? There's two, below is not zero, right? Some people might get confused by that. We don't care because this is not the leading coefficient. This is the leading coefficient for row one. So all these three, irrelevant. So because of that, we stop there, right? <sighs> okay, well, I hope you wrote it or wrote, uh, write this somewhere because I do not have the room.
Uh, so I'm just going to raise it. So it's going to be 2, 2, 2, 0, and then uh, 0, 7, 4, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. So that's it, okay? Now, now that this is our, this, we have the echelon form, and that's the goal objective of the Gaussian elimination, right? Now we convert this into a uh, linear equation. So again, I'm going to just make things up like this, right? You could put this as unknown if you want, but, you know, but, tech, but let's just keep it as a number so that it actually looks like a linear equation, right? So I have 2x plus 2y plus 2z equals 0. Oh, that's, no, actually no. Yeah, so that's that. Next one is 7y plus 4z equals to 1. And 0 equals 0. Interesting. So, um, because of this, we have infinite solutions, right? So, that, so, that, that, so that's why we're going to have parameters, like we talked about in 1.1. But anyways, so 7y plus 4z equals 1. We have two unknown variables, which is expected because we have infinite solutions, right? I mean, if we had one unknown solution, then we can find out what that is, and it will be too easy, right? So, because of that, you get to choose. You can choose Y, you can choose Z, I don't really care, right? So, um, the reason why we don't care is because one of them will have to be a parameter. Remember, infinite solutions, right? Value of Y will change depending on what Z is. Z's value may change depending on what the Y is. But, you know, it's like who laid, uh, for, uh, who, uh, it's, it's, but that's like a dilemma of a chicken and an egg, right? Which came first? Right? So rather than trying to solve which one, which you should start with and wasting your time, just choose one and then, you know, choose one and then try to define the other, right? So if for this one, I'm just going to define Z, right? So let's say Z is, and remember, parameter, right? So try to use something that is not a typical unknown variable, right? If we discussed it in 1.1, 1 .1, so uh, as to why we use parameter. Um, so uh, I'm going to put macro, you know, biology, I don't know, right? Z equals to uh, this, and then it has to be a real number. Just write that because it has to be a real number, so if it isn't, then it gets all complicated, right? So if that's the case, then 7y equals 2. So I'm just going to rearrange this equation, right? Oh, you guys can barely see. Ah. So, yeah, 7y becomes, uh, so 7y becomes, 4z goes to the right, so it's going to be 1 minus 4z, okay? Now, we already said z equals to a macro, so that's going to be 1 minus 4 macro. Like so, see? 1 minus 4 macro. So, that, so that's what it is, right? So, um... Yeah, oh man, okay. Let's see if switching to the other way helps. It might help, be help, more helpful. Okay, so that's that. We haven't, we're still not done. We define z, we define y, we're missing x. So it's gonna be 2x equals 2. I'm gonna move both of this to the right, right? So it's gonna be negative 2y minus negative 2z. Well, we both, we already defined these two, so we can just jump in, right? y was 1. Yeah, you can see it. Yeah. What? So what? Um, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> I bet someone was screaming, screaming at me. Because remember, this is 7y equals 1 minus 4z, right? So this is true, but y equals 2. Uh, this all divided by 7. You see that? Because there's 7y, right? So um, I have to divide 7 here and divide 7 there, right? So, oh man, that's going to give me an ugly number. Ugly algorithm, but let's see. So it will be that. Right? Now, you may want to simplify. I also it with it, to be honest. This is not calculus where it says simplify, right? So I would just leave it like this if you have time and if your teacher insists, maybe simplify, but I don't really care, right? Oh, no, no, no. I also made the same mistake here. 2x equals that. So, in order to just get an x, divide by 2. So, this one is easy because there's negative 2 here, negative 2 here, so I could just do it. Right? 
2, 2, 2 cancels out, right? Sort of similar to the quadratic uh, solutions, right? Uh, if you guys remember. So, because of that, x is going to equal that. So, all you have to do is just write that x equals to this, uh, y equals to that, and z equals to that. Right? And that's all there is, right? So, that's the Darcy's elimination. Now, interestingly enough, uh, there are other, uh, there's, uh, there's another question later on that basically has the same question. So, okay, maybe I should really try to run small so that I don't have to move this as often. Ah, okay. I'll try not to move you again. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Right there. Oh. Yeah, sorry, okay. So, same question. I believe this is actually... Um, oh yeah, so it actually is a uh, question uh, 10. So you're now you're still solving for the same linear system, but we're using Gauss-Jordan uh, elimination, right? So Gauss-Jordan uh, elimination. So remember Gauss-Jordan elimination was a reduced one, right? So, um, okay, let's uh, go back again, 2, 2, 2, 0, and then negative 2, 5, 2, 1, and 8, 1, 4, negative 1. Okay, so we're going to do the exactly same thing as we've done before, except we're going to be using Gauss, uh, Gauss, uh, Gauss's Jordan uh, elimination. Now, having said that, even though they're technically a little different, because one is actual form and one is reduced form, would that ever change the solution? Never. It should be the Oh my god, I'm now talking like Maria. This, this is not cool. Okay, but anyway, um, but uh, yeah, what was I saying? So yeah, so it doesn't matter if it's echelon form, reduced form, Gauss, Gaussian elimination, or Gauss's uh, Jordan elimination. The solution should be the same. So have that in mind, okay? So what we figured out before, it should give me the same thing as that. So anyways, so let's just march through. Um, here, now I'm going to actually divide the first row into like this. So what I'm going to actually write down what I did. So say, say, remember what we said? Uh, augmented matrix. I don't. I, you may not have to write it. It's just a habit of mine. But, but uh, so, how did I go from here to here? Simple. I just did line one divided by two equals to a new line one. Right? Two, 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 two. I just divide both all of them by half. Right? Why did I do that? Why didn't I do it before? I could have done it before, but I didn't because it was a Gaussian elimination, which means it's echelon form. On the echelon form, they had three rules, right? Nowhere uh, where they said the leading entries have to be one. So I didn't bother. Actually, I, actually it's not just not bothering. You, you shouldn't be doing it. Then, you know, the professors might say, oh, you don't understand the definition of echelon form. Die. And gives you a wrong uh, you know, penalty or whatever. I'm probably being paranoid. I'm like the worst teacher out there. Uh, when it comes to details, but nonetheless, so because so because of that, because of because now we're uh, dealing with reduced form, I want one and one leading coefficients, right? So that's why purpose changed, all right? So rest is like you know very similar game, right? So again, I want this to be the only leading coefficient on my column, right? He's like saying this is my term. All these should be zeros, right? <laughs> Isn't that like that in real life? So. Um, leaving first row as the same, but now let's get rid of this negative 2 and 8. How do I get rid of negative 2? Simple. Uh, times this by 2. So line 1 times 2. Yes, you guys can see it. Yeah. Plus line 2 is going to be the new line 2. So if that's the case, uh, 1 times 2 is 2. Negative 0 is 0. 1 times 2 is 2. Plus 5 is 7. If you're not comfortable with uh, additions really quickly, feel free to write it down on the side. I do that when we multiply matrices in 1.3 and 1.4. So like I do, it's like two, 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 and then I just add. So don't be embarrassed to do that, okay? Who cares uh, how slow you are? All we care about is whether you get it right or wrong, right? So anyways, uh, so one times two is two, two plus two is four. Zero times, uh, zero times two is zero, so it's gonna be just one, because one is right there. Okay, so now we're going to do everything at the same time. How do I get rid of 8? 1 times negative 8. Negative 8 plus 8 is 0. So negative 8, line 1, plus line 3, 
equals to new line 3. Okay, so negative, so, uh, so if I had negative 8 times 1, plus 8 is 0, and then this is going to be negative 8, 1, so it's going to be negative 7, um, negative 8, negative 4, negative 1, because 0 plus negative 1, right? Realize how they sort of look similar anyway, right? So, you know, we do the same uh, trick, right? That we used before for Gauss. Now, uh, a Gaussian elimination. So, 0, 7, 4, 1. Um, I'm, le I'm writing in row 1 and 2 because I'm annoyed by this guy. Right? This is my leading coefficient for the second row. The next leading coefficient should be on the right. It's not. So, something must be done to this guy. So, what I'm going to do is negative, uh, 7 and negative 7. Perfect, right? So, it's going to be line 2 plus line 3. It's going to be the new line 3. Oh, yeah. I thought I was talking about Lion King. But anyway, 0, 0. 0, right? So 7 plus negative 7 is 0, 4, negative 4 is 0, 1, negative 1 is 0. So actually very similar uh, matrix as we had before. And I won't really bother going through the, going through the, um, the lin uh, or going through the uh, solutions uh, because it will be exactly the same. The only difference is this. Because now, let's look at it. Is this a reduced form? Well, let's see. Leading coefficient, uh, so all the, oh, no, 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 sorry, 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 no, we are not done, we are not done, my bad, my bad, remember, leading co-entries all have to be 1 for Gauss's uh, Jordan elimination, right, leading coefficient, 1, bloody good, Next, this is leading coefficient, good, but if you want to be reduced, this better be 1, oh, crap, what do we do, very simple, so next one, uh, next one, what I would do, uh, you guys can't see that, right, so, I'm just going to raise here, so never do this on test, but I'm just going to move it up here just for visibility. You guys can sort of, sort of see it. Ah, there we go. Okay. So, ah, so um, what I'm going to do, so the first one, we're happy, first row we're happy with, so it's going to stay the way it is. Next one, I want zero, and then I want one. Right? It is two. Uh, now you can see the bottom. Ah, this is... This is just perfect. So yeah, so remember this used to be 7, 4, and 1, right? So I want the 7 to be gone. Uh oh. Yeah, there we go. So because of that, I'm going to have to fix that soon. But anyways, so because of that, what I'm going to do actually do is uh, line 2 times 1, 7. So that I can get rid of the 7 and make it become 1, right? But, you know, it goes both ways. So remember, there used to be 4 here. So it's going to be one, 4 over 7. Oops. 7. And then that was 1 here. So 1 over 7. 0, 0, 0, 0. That is reduced. Leading coefficient, 1. Leading coefficient, 1. No leading coefficient, who cares, right? Leading coefficient, 1. 0, 0. Oh, yeah, there's no top. We're checking the top now, right? Here, oh, oh no, we're not done, ah. We are not done, because we still haven't met the last, see, this is why definition is so bloody important, right? This is why lawyers make tons of money, if they know what they're doing, right? So, yeah, so problem is, remember, the last rule is, above leading entry has to be zero. Don't care, nothing's up there. But, uh-oh, this better be zero. This is a leading coefficient. I want zero, both uh, uh, zeros on the top as well, right? So I gotta get rid of that. So how do we get rid of that? So all I do is, well, I'm trying to get a one. So let's get rid of that one using this guy. So it's gonna be one, oh, a zero. Okay, I'm gonna write zeros because nobody cares about zero at this point, right? So it's gonna be one, four, seven, one over seven. I'm keeping this the same because I'm gonna be using this guy to get rid of that one, right? So what I'm gonna do is now, how do I get rid of that? Well, simple. Just make this one become negative one and just add that with one. And then this should be zero. So what I'm going to do is uh, negative L2 plus L1 becomes a new L1. The reason why I still keep writing the one here because zero times whatever is going to be zero. So if you zero times one is always going to be one. That's why I just wrote a one here, right? If you were wondering. That's going to become negative one plus one, zero. This is going to be negative, oh, this is where I have to 
right here on the side. You guys can't see here, so um, so um, yeah. So uh, so um, what I'm gonna do is this is gonna be negative four seven, and I'm gonna be adding that with one. So seven over seven, right? Because seven divided by seven is one. So I'm gonna be adding that, and that's gonna be three over seven. One over seven, that's negative zero, right? So it's just gonna be negative one over seven. That. Oh, crap, is it now done? Please, yeah, it is. No zeros, zeros here. All entries are one. All below is zero. I'm just checking the echelon form as well. Um, yeah, le leading coefficients are organized. Non zero at the bottom. Okay, finally, we're done. So now this is, now that we have the reduced form, now we can go ahead and do the solutions. Now, the number now looks a little weird, but. Remember what, what the question we did in number six? It should give me the exact same answer. Uh, let's see if it, do you want to see if it does or this is too, this is, you know, maybe trivial so you don't have to worry about it. Mm. See, this is how crazy I am. I start asking myself, uh, even though I'm the only person here, I'm, you know, talking to myself and asking questions from you guys. Uh, you know. Anyways, but uh, yeah, so in sound it continues. But X. And the zero is going to be nothing, so, and that's going to be 3, 7, Z equals to negative 1, 7. Ah, uh, this is not cool. I'm going to be dealing with fractions. Uh, it's going to be Y plus 4 over 7, uh, Z equals 1 over 7, and 0 equals 0. So hopefully uh, it should be the same. Um, yeah, but anyways, yeah, so... Again, I'm going to do the same thing. Can you guys see? Or I can write it here. Yeah. So, Z, let's say Z uh, equals to macro, where it's a real number. So, uh, because of that, uh, Y equals to, um, I think it's going to be the same. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it will be the same. It will be the same, yeah. <laughs> it's like, what are you, what's wrong with you? you would, you've been saying that all the time. I know. I'm crazy. Okay, so 1 over 7 minus negative uh, 4 over 7z. So it, this still looks a little different, but if you remember, yeah, but if you remember, uh, I think, um, I think basically it's of a divine sum, I think it was like um, 1 minus 4z divided by 7. I think that was the answer we were using before, right? So. I mean, it looks a little different, but it's the same thing, right? 1 divided by 7, negative 4z divided by 7. So, uh, I won't go further in details. I think I'll just exhaust you. But that's the idea, right? So, solution should be the same. And once you, you know, get all the way to the reduced form or to the regular form or whatever, um, you know, that, that, that's the only difference, right? The elimination process is different, but once you reduce... Uh, reduce it or put it into simplest echelon form then you just uh, figure out the uh, values and then everything else and then then you know it's like then you should give you the same answers and the algebraic calculation should be on the same page so that's that uh, i think i actually spent a little more time because i was going through definitions and you know constantly giving weird uh uh constantly relating with a bunch of other ID, uh things we learned already so i think i spent too much time uh, I'll pause it now and uh, go continue with the next question a little later. But uh, yeah, I'll see you on the next video. Alright, so we are continuing 1.2. Uh, I really need to be less wordy about these things, but yeah. But hopefully uh, by being more detailed and uh, being more redundant, hopefully uh, this is uh, going through your head uh, more efficiently. But uh, anywho. I'm actually starting to lose my voice too, so um, hopefully you won't, you won't notice that, but of course you would. What am I thinking, right? But anyway, okay, so let's uh, keep pushing. Um, so I did 6 and 10. Uh, I mean, you already have the answers for 5 and 7 and uh, 9 and uh, 11 respectively, right? So, you know, so hopefully this... Uh, I could do eight and uh, eight and twelve, but you know it's just I think at this point we're you know it's mar it, we're approaching the margin of uh, diminishing returns. So let's get to more exciting and fun stuff. Uh, that's well not okay fun for me. It's like playing minesweepers. 
I don't know if you are into those games. Once you get addicted, there's no coming back. It's like as bad as solitaire, right? But nonetheless, yeah. So let's go to a little bit more exciting stuff, uh, like the actual process of elimination. So, um, but before we go there, we should briefly do 13 and 14. Because that's where we get to use this uh, homogeneous rules, right? So, uh, let's look at 13. There's a word explanation, but maybe going through uh, makes more sense. So I'm going to have ba, 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 2, negative 3, 4, negative 1, 0, 0, 0, wing. Oh, when I do this, uh, just in case if you didn't watch my 1.1, this just means these are numbers. But ultimately it's irrelevant, right? It's simply because like, we don't care if this number now, we treat it the same as uh, any other numbers as shown uh, in the previous elimination process that we've been doing. Um, so, anyway, 7, uh, where'd you go? 1, uh, negative 8, and uh, 9, negative 1, plus 1, 8, 2. Okay, so that's that. Yes. Okay, so, um, we get to decide, okay, so how, so basically the thing, special thing about homogeneous uh, solutions is there, sometimes uh, we can find out um, how, like remember sometimes you have infinite solutions, right? Or unique solutions and stuff like that. Um, so as long as it's not inconsistent, right? If it is then, you know, uh, probably, it's probably not going to work. But um, we want to know how many uh, unknowns. So here we have how many unknowns? We have four, right? X1, X2, X3, X4. As an example, right? So we have four uh, wait, wait, hold on a second. Yeah, we have four unknowns, 